Bedtime with Mrs. Honeybee. Today, we'll be exploring the world of Toy Story. Now let's all be polite and give nice baby Andy's room welcome. All you have to do is close your eyes, get cozy, and listen to the sound of my voice. Mrs. Honeybee will be your guide. Let's begin. Imagine you are in the fantastic world of Toy Story in Andy's room that is painted bright blue. You are laying down tucked into a big warm bed with the fluffy dark blue colors pulled all the way up to your chin. Only your face can feel the gentle, cool air blowing in from the window that is on your left. You are breathing calmly, curiously looking around this new, welcoming place. You feel at ease, tucked in, but you're not tired yet. Looking around the room more, you see wooden bookshelves that hold book after book after book. The covers are all different colors, bright green, then white, then brown. Next to the bookshelf is a small yellow chest that opens from the top. You hear rustling and mumbling coming from inside the chest as if something in there is moving about but you cannot quite understand what's making that sound. What's in there? It sounds like someone is talking, but the small yellow chest is too small for people. What could it be? You are being so quiet, tucked into the warm bed, that the sound seems to fill up the room. All you can hear is the mysterious rustling and the sounds of your own calm breathing in and out, in and out. The soft blankets that are covering your body are laying gently over you, rising and falling with your calm breathing. The rustling and murmuring sounds continue. Your head is so comfortable, laying perfectly supported on the soft pillow, but you decide to sit up because you have to know what's in that small yellow chest. You are sitting up in your comfortable bed, your shoulders and arms can now feel the gentle, cool air blowing in from the window on your left. There's a nightstand to your right with a light blue lamp on it. You can see a switch that will turn on the lamp. As you reach for the switch to turn on the lamp, all of a sudden, you notice movement from the small yellow chest. You quickly look back at it from the lamp. What was that? It appears to be still, unmoved. You look back at the lamp and turn on the light. The bright light fills up the room. Now you can see everything inside the room. Next to the small yellow chest, there's a television with two video game controllers laying out in front of it. The cords are tangled. Just then, you notice another movement from the small yellow chest out of the corner of your eye. You quickly zoom your attention to it. Again, it is still appearing to be unmoved. 
the rustling and murmuring starts and stops. Starts and stops. You are curious about this chest, so you decide to go over to it and investigate. With one scoop, you throw the layered soft blankets that were covering you so warmly off your body, rotate to hang your legs dangling off the side of the bed. You sit there for a second, feeling your legs dangle. You didn't realize how high up the bed was. It makes you feel like you're flying, being so high up that you swing your legs back and forth, back and forth. Your right leg extends out front of you and whooshes back in exchange with your left, which does the same. You feel a big smile come across your face because you know that this room is full of fun. With that feeling, you continue on to investigate the small yellow chest for yourself. You're standing up tall now, walking the few short steps along a creaking wooden floor. With each step, you feel the cold wooden floor beneath your soft feet. You are wearing your favorite socks and they feel so comfy. You have worn these socks so much that the toe area is all stretched out and they puff out well beyond your toes. You wiggle your toes in your socks as you make your way to the small yellow chest, creaking the wooden floorboards the whole way. Once you get to this mysterious, fascinating chest, you take a big breath in before you investigate, you breathe in big, as if breathing the air all the way from your puffy sock toes to your hair that is gently moved by the breeze from the window. Then you breathe out big, ready to investigate. You reach out your hand to touch it. It's made of wood painted sunny yellow. There's a small gold-colored latch that you can pick up and let fall back into place to secure the chest. You pick up the latch and open the chest. You're so excited to see this small yellow chest is a toy chest. It's full of all sorts of toys. There's Ham, a pink piggy bank. There's Buzz Lightyear, an astronaut in a spacesuit with his sharp wings that click out. There's Woody in his cowboy outfit, complete with his brown hat and boots. There's Slinky, whose coils are stretched out, laying over the other toys. But he has a sweet puppy face and a tail that looks like it can wag. There's Mr. Potato Head, too. It looks like Mr. Potato Head has both eyes stuck into place, but his mouthpiece isn't stuck in. You reach your other hand into the toy chest to grab his mouthpiece, which are two red lips that you can stick below his nose and mustache. The chest is opened all the way, the top resting into a relaxed, open position. You can grab Mr. Potato Head and give him his mouth back, so you do. Were all the toys rustling and murmuring in there? Was that the sound you heard? You think so and are so excited to see the toys come to life for yourself. You quickly run back to the warm bed Switch off the lights and cover yourself with the layered blankets. If you pretend to be asleep, the toys will come to life. You close your eyes tight, tucked into the warm bed again. The blankets pulled up all the way to your chin, 
so only your face can feel the gentle, cool air from the window. Your eyelids are closed tight, the room is still, and sure enough, you hear a sound coming from the yellow chest. The toys came back to life and are peeking out of the toy chest to make sure you are asleep. You stay very still, calm, breathing steadily, in through your nose and out through your mouth. You even pretend to snore a little so they think you're fast asleep. With just a little peek, opening your right eye, just the tiniest little sliver, you can see Buzz Lightyear's eyes behind his space helmet, peeking out from the yellow toy chest that's cracked open just slightly. You close your eye all the way again because you want them to come out. You keep breathing steadily in through your nose and out through your mouth. You snore a little louder and breathe a little deeper. That did just the trick. The yellow toy chest flings all the way open and all the toys make their way out of the chest and fill the floor with activity. You cannot believe it. This is incredible. As the toys begin playing, you sit up abruptly to catch them in the act. They immediately fall in their places. Still, you have a big smile on your face that you want them to come back to life and be with you. You say, toys, I know you can come to life. Please come back to life because I'm not yet tired. I need to go on a bedtime adventure. Let's go on an adventure. The toys stubbornly stay still, laying in place covering the wooden floorboards. You want so badly to hear the floorboards creak with the sounds of toys. You hop up out of the comfortable bed to rouse them from their pretend. Make them come to life. You walk your socked feet over to Buzz Lightyear, pick him up, and hold him out in front of your face. I am Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger. It's okay, Buzz. You can come back to life. We can go on an adventure. Since breathing helps you feel good, you decide to take a big breath for Buzz. Maybe that will convince them to come back to life for your adventure. You push the big red button that lets down his space helmet so he can feel the breath too. You take the biggest breath in yet, filling your chest with the gentle, cool air from the window. You breathe all your air out through your mouth, lightly blowing on buzz. Just then, you see his eyes twitch. Then, his eyes blink. You see his nose crinkle just a little. You try one more. You know this is going to work. You take another big breath in, fill up your chest, and breathe out through your mouth. This time, a little more. Just then, Buzz gives you a big smile. You have breathed him back to life. He exclaims, hey, that tickles. Both giggling, you hug him tight and he hugs you back. You are so happy he has come back to life. And he is so happy that you want to go on a bedtime adventure before you fall asleep. He tells the other toys it's okay to come back to life. And they all do. Even Mr. Potato Head 
who thanks you for putting his mouth back on. You would not believe what I've been through tonight. The gentle, cool air coming in from the window flows against your arms and your legs and your socked feet. You grab Buzz and Woody to begin your bedtime adventure. You want to follow the wind as it comes in and out of the open window. So you walk with Buzz and Woody over to the window. You stand big in front of the window while Buzz and Woody stand small on the windowsill. That's when you notice the fluffy warm blankets that were covering you. You can twist and turn them around to make a rope that you three can climb down on. All the toys help. You take the big blankets off the bed and all the toys help you to tie them together in knots, crisscrossing the corners, then pulling them through to make a blanket knot. You have three blankets secured to the window as you slowly, foot by foot, lower it down to the ground that's far below the open window. Buzz and Woody hop on either of your shoulders as you begin to climb down the blanket. Holding the blanket tightly with your strong grip, you lower yourself by placing your right hand lower down on the blanket rope, then your left hand, then your right hand, then your left hand. You're almost down to the green grass in the front yard. Once you can almost feel the grass on your socked feet, you jump the last little way down to the grass. You gently land on the grass with Buzz and Woody still on your shoulders. They are so small compared to you. You wonder if you can make yourself small like them that might be really fun for your adventure. Your breath can bring toys to life, so maybe it can make you smaller and bigger too. You try it. You take a little breath, the tiniest breath, as if you're sipping air into your lungs, in through your mouth. With that tiny sip, Woody and Buzz drop to the grass with a whooshing sound. Your tiny breath has made you tiny just like them. The world looks different when you're this tiny. You are even tinier than a single blade of the green grass that you landed gently on. Woody and Buzz are excited that you are their size. But since you are so small, you will not be able to adventure very far, very quickly. You look up and can see all the toys cheering on your adventure from high up in the window. You shout back for them to send a toy down that will help you go fast on your adventure. All the toys scurry from the window out of view. You, Buzz and Woody, explore the grass. There's dirt under the grass and it's cool to the touch. You breathe in and the smell of grass surrounds you. It's refreshing. The nighttime air hums with sounds of crickets as a cricket hops right by you, Woody and Buzz. You are so tiny that a cricket seems huge. It flutters its hopping legs to make its cricket sounds, says hello, and hops on its way. The toys exclaim from the window. They are sending down the bright green toy car you saw on the toy chest. It wants to go with you, and with the remote, you can make it go fast on your adventure. 
the toys wrap the car in a blanket and hoist it down to you. When it gets to you, it rooms its engine loudly, excited to be going with you. You, Woody and Buzz hop in, holding the remote in your hands. You get to decide exactly where to go. You push one of the remote levers forward as hard as you can, and the toy car shoots up into the air out of the grass. You all wave goodbye to the crickets and the other toys as you sail up into the air and back down onto the sidewalk, zooming along your adventure. You zoom along the sidewalk and the picket fence is coming up. There's a small space between the posts. You quickly figure out that you are small enough on the toy car with Woody and Buzz to make it through the fence. You're zooming, 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 feeling the wind on your face as you go fast. You think you are small enough to make it through the fence posts. You take a calm breath in and out. You are confident you're going to make it through the fence posts without getting stuck. You push the lever even more forward and the toy car catches air, flying up. You just make it through the fence posts. You did it. You're now out on the sidewalk, zooming away from Andy's house, feeling the excitement of adventure. Your heart is beating. You are happy to be here with Woody and Buzz. You all laugh and joke around like best friends as you sail down the quiet neighborhood street on this cool, calm evening. All the houses are quiet, still, and darkened, as if they are sleeping while all their people and pets are sleeping inside. Seeing how calm and quiet the houses are relaxes you, so you slow down the toy car. You, Woody and Buzz, slowly quiet down and just enjoy the breeze on your faces as you slowly drive around this quiet neighborhood, appreciating how good it feels to have these two friends who enjoy adventuring with you. You are getting sleepier now. It's so relaxing to peacefully drive through the neighborhood. You can see the moon now. It is shining big and bright. Woody is in the back seat of the toy car. He's sitting upright but you notice that his head nods forward every so often because he's falling asleep. Woody and Buzz are getting sleepy too. You decide to turn the bright green toy car around, yawning as you twist the lever all the way to one side to turn slowly around. The toy car begins to putter making a tinkering sound that it wasn't before. Is the car getting sleepy too? Turned around, you head back home so you can tuck sleepy Woody and sleepy Buzz back into the small yellow toy chest for some rest. As you drive back, still tiny small, you again notice the moon shining bright above you in the evening sky. You breathe the evening air all the way from the moon in through your nose and back out through your mouth. You notice the car slowing down, slowing, slowing, slowing. You try pushing the lever forward, forward, 
with all of your might, but it won't go anymore. The car is too sleepy and has run out of battery. Woody and Buzz jolt awake when they realize the car isn't moving anymore. How are you going to get back to tuck Woody and Buzz in for sleep? You look at the bright, softly shining moon again. Its beams seem to shine down in a path that is lit up from the moon down to the sleepy neighborhood where you are. You follow the moonbeam all the way down, tracing its softly shining light with your sleepy eyes. You follow it down from the sky all the way to a big leafy tree that is swaying in the cool, gentle breeze. The softly shining moonlight allows you to see the leaves as the air breezes through them when they move back and forth, back and forth. You can see the branches behind them that are holding up the leaves. You notice something stuck in the tree. What is that? You, Woody and Buzz, hop out of the car, push it closer to the big tree. Once you get under the big, tall tree, you can look up to its branches. There's a neon pink kite stuck in the tree. That is just the thing you need to get you and your toy friends home. You all walk up to the base of the tree through the blades of grass that are even bigger than you since you are still tiny. You reach out your hands to feel the barky brown tree trunk. You are standing up tiny on a root that comes up out of the dirt. You are going to need to be bigger to climb the tree. You remember how powerful your breath is and decide to breathe your biggest breath yet to grow yourself gigantic like the big tall tree. With all of your might, you breathe in big, Big, big through your nose. You can feel your chest expanding, filled with the evening air. Your belly expands. You are growing, growing, growing. As you breathe out big through your mouth, the force of your big breath grows you even more. You are now as big as the tree. You have to duck your head down to avoid hitting your head on the branches. Moving your gigantic hand toward the now tiny, bright pink kite, you grab it gently between just two fingers. You pluck it effortlessly from the dense branches that held it stuck. You look around the neighborhood with the point of view of the tree. It's somehow even more relaxing to be a big, tall tree. You can see everything it can. The moon looks closer. All the houses that line the street look smaller. You can see several streets over. Everything is darkened, calm, and sleepy. You let out a big, gigantic yawn in your gigantic state. You remember you, Woody, and Buzz are so sleepy. Let's head back home. You need to be tiny again. So you take in a little, teeny, tiny sip of air and with a whoosh, you zip down to your teeny, tiny size. The blade of grass seems big again, as does the kite you are now holding on to with all of your tiny might. 
it's so big now that you lose your grip a little bit when the breeze picks up. There's a long, thin white string that you can hold on to. Together, you, Woody and Buzz, hold on to the thin white kite string and yank it over to the car with all of your might. The breeze is picking up a little more, so you all lean forward, struggling against the cool evening air with your kite in tow. You all march in sync. Right foot bursts forward with all the energy you have. Left foot bursts forward with all the energy you have. Right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. You finally get back to the toy car who has been snoozing soundly this whole time. You wrap it securely in the kite string, just like you do for Buzz, Woody, and yourself. Holding on tight to the string, you help the breeze blow the kite back home, focusing on the bright pink kite that glows in the moonlight. You take a deep breath in through your nose and breathe all the air out through your mouth into the kite. Your powerful breath sends the kite and you and all of your friends soaring into the night sky. Sailing on the kite string with your toy friends, you let out another big yawn. Now you are ready for bed. You sail back down the street through the sleepy neighborhood, guided by the light of the moon and your own happy heart full of love for your adventure and your toy friends. You float gently through the nighttime air. House after house trails behind you like the thin white kite string you are holding onto. You can see Andy's house with all your other toy friends at the windowsill, excited to welcome you back. You take another breath in through your nose and with your breath out, you direct the kite back toward the window. You sail smoothly through the window and you are back in the relaxing room where you started your bedtime adventure. You untie yourself and your toy friends from the kite string and put Buzz and Woody gently back into the small yellow toy chest so that they can get some sleep. As you gently shut the toy chest so you don't wake them up, you whisper good night to all the toys. You walk your socked feet back toward the warm, blanketed bed. Now when you walk, you are so sleepy that your feet are sliding across the floor instead of stepping. You are so sleepy that you cannot even lift your socked feet all the way up. You finally get to the bed and hop in. The floor gives one last creak as if to say good night. You nestle yourself comfortably back into bed under the layers of warm, fuzzy blankets. You are tucked all the way in up to your chin. You take one last sleepy breath in through your nose and out through your mouth and peacefully drift off into your dreams. You are here on the floor of Andy's room with a soft plushy rug beneath you. My Toy Story friends and I are so happy you're here getting comfy with us. 
Andy left his window open so a warm evening breeze blows around the room. It blows along the light blue walls with little puffy white clouds painted on them. It blows over the big wooden toy chest and it blows gently against your skin, wrapping your shoulders like a warm fuzzy blanket. Let's start by taking a little slow breath in through our noses. Your chest rises to hold the evening air in. Then slowly breathe out through your mouth. Your chest lowers back down, releasing the evening air back out through the window. Take one last moment to make sure your whole body is as comfortable as possible. All the way from the top of your head, down your neck, spine and hips, to the bottoms of your toes. Woody is lying beside you, wearing his cowboy hat and a big smile. His toy arms and legs are flopped out in all directions. Buzz Lightyear is standing small and upright to your other side. His space helmet is closed and his wings are up. His toy arms are bent with his toy hands on hips, as if he's standing proud of a new planet. Without someone to believe in them, both of our friends, Woody and Buzz, are still just toys. Reach your hand out to pick up toy Woody. His arms and legs hang freely as you hold him in your hand. As you place toy Woody back down, let your body be heavy in whatever position it's in. Let your arms hang and your legs flop however they want to, just like a toy Woody's arms and legs are. Looking back at Buzz, standing tall and strong, make sure your neck and back are as straight as possible and your shoulders and hips are evenly supporting the rest of your heavy body, just like Buzz's are. If you have wings, make sure they are out strong and ready to fly. Oh, impressive wingspan. Very good. Oh, plastic. Can't fly. They are a terillium carbonic alloy, and I can fly. Let's bring our best toy friends to life here in Andy's room. All they need is someone to believe in them. They need someone to believe that they are more than just toys, that they are capable of being a good friend, going on fun adventures, and taking care of their humans. Do you believe in Woody and Buzz? I know I do. Let's take another bigger breath in through our noses, your chest rises and fills with the belief that your best toy friend Woody needs in order to come to life. As you breathe the believing air out through your mouth, send it to Woody. Wrap his floppy toy body with your belief in him, just like a squeezing hug. Your chest lowers back down releasing all the love and care you have for Woody. His toy eyes blink once, slowly, then again, then again. He straightens one of his floppy arms and bends it up toward his cowboy hat and uses the other to prop himself up facing you. With an even bigger smile, he tips his cowboy hat at you and says, 
Howdy, partner. Oh, finally. <sighs> he is thankful that you believed in him enough to bring him to life. He gets up off the soft, plush rug and begins to run over to you. The first couple steps of his cowboy boots are wobbly. His body is a bit stiff from being a toy for so long. He makes his way over to you for a big squeezing hug. Then he gets comfortable right beside you. Let's do another believing breath for Buzz Lightyear, just like we did for Woody. Come on, Buzz. I, Buzz, I can't do this without you. I need your help. Let's take another big breath in through our noses. Your chest rises and fills with the belief that your other best toy friend Buzz needs in order to come to life. Hold it in your chest for a moment and feel your heart beat once, twice, three times. As you breathe the believing air out through your mouth, send it to Buzz. Wrap his toy body with your belief in him as he stands tall and proud in his spacesuit. Woody is cheering you on, wishing and hoping that Buzz comes to life too. You got wings, you glow in the dark. Your helmet does that, that, that whoosh thing. You are a cool toy. Your chest lowers back down, releasing all the love and care you have for Buzz. And it's not because you're a space ranger, pal. It's because you're a toy. His eyes blink once, then look side to side. Once he sees you, he presses the red button to open his space helmet, then lifts his arm pointing up in the air and says, To infinity and beyond. Now that you have brought him to life, he feels like he's capable of anything. Woody stands up to cheer and celebrate as Buzz walks slow Space Commander steps over to you. He lifts up his gloved spacesuit hand for a high five, then settles in comfy and smiling to your other side. Our best toy friends are so happy to be here with you. Woody gets up from beside you without a word. He hops on to you, walks small cowboy steps along your legs, jumping up to your shoulder, then climbs up to the very top of your head. Can you see him standing tiny on the top of your head? He is looking toward the big wooden toy chest on the other side of the room. From the top of your head, he whistles twice. You can hear the toy chest creak open, and one by one, all the rest of our toy friends hop out. They know how much you believe in all of the toys and want to come meet you. Let's focus on our believing breaths while all the toys come out of the toy chest. Breathe in through your nose until you cannot take in any more air. Then hold it tight in your chest like a hug. Then breathe out through your mouth. Sending all your love and care throughout the entire room full of toys. As Woody climbs back down beside you, the top of Bo Peep's shepherd's hook hangs over the edge of the toy chest. She uses it to pull herself out and balances on the toy chest in her puffy polka dot dress. If only you could see how much Andy misses you. 
then two Mr. Potato Head eyes, a mustached nose, and a mouth fling out of the toy chest. You would not believe what I've been through tonight. Remember to keep focusing on your believing breaths so all the toys can come to life. Bo Peep uses her shepherd's hook to hoist Mr. Potato Head out of the toy chest too. They both walk over to you on the soft rug. Behind you, from under the bed, Slinky Dog walks the front of his long, slinky body towards you. He gets all the way in front of you with his two front paws before he realizes he forgot his back paws under the bed. The slinky coils around the back of you as his little back paws meet his front paws. Once his slinky body collapses back down to size, he waves his paw hello because he's so happy that you believe in them enough to bring all of them to life. Don't forget to keep focusing on your believing breaths. There's one more toy on its way. You can hear Rex still in the toy chest. His arms are too short to reach up and pull himself out. Bo Peep strolls back over and uses her shepherd's hook to help him out too. All of our toy friends are circled around you. We're just waiting for Rex to waddle on over to us. Once he does, he sits down with his dinosaur feet sticking out in front of him and his dinosaur tail out behind him. With his teeny T-Rex arm and a big smile, he waves you hello and thanks you for believing in him. With all of our toy friends around us, let's try taking our biggest breath yet. All of our toy friends want to let you know that they believe in you. When they focus on their next big believing breath, they will send all that loving belief to you just like you did for them. When you focus on taking this next breath, you too can focus on your belief in yourself. Focus on the proud feeling that comes with knowing that you can do and be anything you set your mind to. You are infinitely capable to follow each and every one of your dreams to infinity and beyond. Let's take big breaths in through our noses. Your chest rises and fills with the love and care from all our toy friends. Hold your belief in yourself tightly in your chest for a moment. Your heart beats once, twice, three times as it fills with love. Then breathe all the air out through your mouth. Take a moment to think of one thing you want to do or something that you want to be. There's no wrong answer. All of our toy friends love and believe in you so much that they know you can make any of your wildest dreams come true because they wouldn't be sitting here now without you. Woody stands up again and points to the top of your head. He believes in you so much that he thinks you would be a perfect second sheriff around these parts. He whistles again. And a cowboy hat, vest, and boots 
appear on you. He thinks it's a perfect fit. He reaches up and pins your very own sheriff star on your vest as he sits back down beside you. But then Buzz stands up with a serious look on his face. Uh, Sheriff? He believes in you so much too that he thinks you would make the best star commander in the entire galaxy. Space Ranger. He pushes a series of buttons on a spacesuit and the cowboy hat, vest, and boots are replaced with your very own spacesuit. Woody is shocked. Oh yeah, tough guy. Buzz salutes you and sits back down beside you. Bo Peep chimes in and says she believes in you so much that you can be a shepherd just like she is. Rex thinks you can even be a big roaring dinosaur like him if you wanted. Were you scared? Mr. Potato Head rubs his eyes to double check, but he thinks you would make a great honorary potato too. Let's take a last little breath in through our noses and out through our mouths. With the next three breaths, focus on what you want to be with the love and support of all your toy friends around you. As you breathe in through your nose, think of what you will wear when you are what you want to be. Hold the air in your chest and imagine yourself as whatever you want to be. Then, when you breathe out through your mouth, send the belief in yourself out into the world so it can believe in you too. Breathe in through your nose, and feel yourself fill up with fresh air and confidence in yourself. Hold the confidence in your chest with your heart full of love. Then breathe all the air out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose one last time. When you cannot take in any more air, Hold it in your chest for a moment, and again, feel your heart beating. Each beat is your heart telling you that it believes in you too. Then, breathe out through your mouth. Whenever you need to believe in yourself, you can remember our time together in this friendly world of Toy Story with Buzz, Woody, Bo Peep, Rex, Slinky Dog, and Mr. Potato Head. They are so happy to spend time with you because there's no one in this whole world like you. I hope you can use what you learned here to be the best you possible. Always remember, Mrs. Honeybee believes in you. You are special and you are loved. I can't wait to see you again.